a multinational effort to excavate key regions of Antarctica in search of artifacts from a flash frozen alien civilization created by refugees is destabilizing the continent's massive ice shelves, according to Secret Space Program whistleblower Corey Good. He furthermore reveals that secret military bases in Antarctica are using some of the artifacts for weapons development in violation of the 1959 Antarctic Treaty, which stipulates that the continent's resources will be only used for scientific purposes. This article is the third in a series. Corey's written contribution to this final installment has led it to being our first collaborative writing venture. To identify who is writing for the reader, I, Michael Sala, will take the role of the narrator and distinguish when Corey is directly contributing in his own words as opposed to me paraphrasing his briefing material. Disclosure of the Antarctica ruins is still imminent, Corey reports, as a number of key variables impact on when and how much is to be revealed to the world about the discoveries while maintaining secrecy about the ongoing military programs to weaponize alien artifacts. In a detailed briefing given to me on March 16, 2017, Corey shared additional details about the pre-Adamite civilization, supplementing the data he previously put out. This new information was originally slated for release in an article, Endgame 3, as the sequel to the popular Endgame 2 article and video which focused on secret Antarctica excavations. Corey said earlier that the extraterrestrial civilization identified by him as pre-Adamites first arrived 55,000 to 60,000 years ago and established outposts all over Antarctica, which notably has a land mass almost twice the size of the contiguous United States. He described them as standing approximately 12 to 14 feet in height and possessing elongated skulls. Corey also described how they created a hybrid species Homo capensis, according to anthropological classification, which became ruling elites or demigods in ancient South American, Asian and European societies. In the March 16 briefing, Corey began by explaining that the pre-Adamites had established their main base right over ancient builder race technology, which included a stargate or wormhole device very similar to that depicted in the popular science fiction show Stargate SG-1. Corey said that the show was an example of a soft disclosure in which the US Air Force took the lead in revealing key elements of the technologies developed by the ancient builder race who had established a travel grid throughout the galaxy using traversable wormholes hundreds of millions if not billions of years ago. When the pre-Adamites first arrived in Antarctica, they quickly asserted control through their advanced technologies over this area populated by human settlements at the time. With their advanced medical technologies, the pre-Adamites then began many genetic experiments and created hybrids that became a servant class. Corey previously released his description of the flash-frozen bodies of the bioengineered hybrids, or Homo capensis, during his latest visit to Antarctica in early January of this year. Corey explained that the pre-Adamite programs interrupted 22 genetic experiments being run by human-looking extraterrestrials first established 500,000 years ago. In a prior report, Corey elaborated that a super federation comprising 40 to 60 of these races had established competing genetic engineering programs with surface humanity. Corey also described how the pre-Adamites engaged in conflict with the human-looking ETs running their 22 genetic experiments, as well as reptilians doing likewise for global influence. Given that the pre-Adamites had established a physical presence on Earth, this gave them an advantage in establishing ruly bloodlines over the Americas, Asia and Europe, as explained in a previous article. At the same time, humans who had escaped into the Earth's interior to avoid multiple surface catastrophes monitored how the different extraterrestrial races competed against each other for influence and power over surface humanity who was still recovering from global catastrophes. One of the inner Earth races that pride themselves on their pure human bloodlines, the Anshar, had a historic connection to the human settlements in Antarctica. However, the Anshar did not cooperate with the pre-Adamites because they considered them to be sociopaths in terms of their treatment of the native Antarctica 
population and other regions of surface humanity where they had established colonies. Corey said that the pre-Adamites treated humans in antiquity in a similar manner to how modern humans treat dogs in terms of crossbreeding for multiple purposes. The pre-Adamites along with the reptilians were a big problem for all humanity. The Anshar were part of a confederation of worlds that sought to make things better on the planet by providing knowledge and technological assistance as described in the Sumerian cuneiform texts. In a previous article, I discussed how the Anunnaki, as described by Zechariah Sitchin in his Earth Chronicle series, involved the Anshar and other off-world groups, according to Corey's sources. To help clarify this point, Corey adds, quote, Anunnaki was a general term that meant ET or those that come from heaven. This definition will upset some people, so be aware. The reptilians, the Nordics, the Ebens and the Anshar were interacting with the ancient Sumerians to assist them in the recovery of their civilization after the great catastrophe that destroyed Atlantis. The Anunnaki were indeed the reptilians, but the other groups that interacted with them were also referred to by this same name, according to my info in the paragrams. End quote. Corey said that a small number of pre-Adamites survived the catastrophe that flash froze Antarctic regions by going inside stasis chambers located in the largest of their three motherships. These ships are miles long and not 30 miles long as reported earlier. The additional information released by Corey suggests there are many risks in waking up the pre-Adamites who would likely attempt to reassert their authority by utilizing their advanced technologies, including the little understood builder race technology. Here Corey adds, quote, The groups in charge of these excavated locations are taking precautions, that is mini nukes with dead man's triggers in case of these becoming hostile. For reference, see the movie Prometheus. End quote. This leads us directly to the secret excavations currently underway of the pre-Adamites bases and ships. Corey disclosed that excavations are occurring in multiple places in Antarctica by different nations, which in some cases are in direct competition to get the most advanced technologies. The goal is to eventually disclose some of these, but many technologies, especially those that are clearly extraterrestrial in origin, will not be released at least to begin with. Corey said that all the nations involved in the Antarctica excavations are capable of making a disclosure announcement on their own, but they are all participating in negotiations to do so in a coordinated manner. Corey thinks the Antarctica disclosures will begin in tandem with prosecutions of the elites involved in pedophilia, human trafficking and other crimes, which includes the blackmailing of leading politicians, academics, industrialists and military officials. He says that the recent Trump administration action to sack 46 district attorneys was due to their inaction in moving forward with such prosecutions. Alternatively, the Russians, the Chinese or smaller nations could begin the Antarctica announcements if negotiations drag out and the US fails to move forward. The former nations are part of what Corey describes as the Earth Alliance. This group has rapidly grown in prominence with economic power mounting in Asia as global cabal Illuminati power centers in Europe and North America continue to gradually wane. This is best illustrated by a battle that took place over Antarctica skies in early 2016. It began when teardrop shaped ships came out of the sea in the Ross Ice Shelf area and sought to escape into deep space. These ships flew out of bases belonging to a corporate run space program called the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate. The ships in turn belonged to the Cabal Illuminati who are allied to another program called the Dark Fleet. They were filled with global elites seeking to escape anticipated global chaos caused by the upcoming solar event. Dozens of delta-shaped craft suddenly appeared as the Cabal Illuminati's Dark Fleet vessels reached the upper atmosphere. The teardrop-shaped ships were badly damaged in the battle and had to turn back and return to their Antarctic bases. Corey said the delta-shaped craft inflicted far more damage than thought possible by such small craft. Corey also stated that the only thing known for certain about the attacking delta-shaped craft was that they were built using Earth-based technology on par with that possessed by the interplanetary corporate conglomerate. This technology solely came from Russia, China and Asian syndicates belonging to an Earth alliance 
Thus, the battle revealed that the Earth Alliance had succeeded in bridging the technological gap with the most advanced space technologies recognized to exist. On a map of Antarctica, Corey has marked six bases belonging to the interplanetary corporate conglomerate, which he was taken to visit by an Anshar spacecraft in early 2016. The largest of these bases is the size of a small industrial city and located near pre-Adamite ruins. More ruins, some of which are poking out of the ice, are not too far away from other bases marked by Corey. The bulk of the secret excavations are occurring within the Ross Ice Shelf. This shelf exists over land rather than ocean and drilling is occurring through more conventional science research projects like Andrill. Corey described two processes which are simultaneously occurring that are having a powerfully destabilizing effect on the Ross Ice Shelf and other ice shelves across the continent. One process utilizes a natural phenomenon that involves harnessing powerful geothermal vents caused by volcanic activity deep below Antarctica's landmass. The vents are releasing enormous quantities of heat that are being directed to melt the ice cover and are forming large caverns under the ice shelf. This has led to geothermal tunnels being formed all the way to the surface. One of these tunnels caused by geothermal vents that reach the surface is located roughly five miles from the South Pole. It is the same tunnel or hole witnessed by an anonymous Navy officer and flight engineer, Brian, who first reported his experience to Linda Moulton Howe in a letter on January 2nd, 2015. She has subsequently interviewed him and gained more information about his Antarctica experiences. In short, he described flying a rescue mission from Davis Station to West Antarctica where he overflew the South Pole. He and his colleagues witnessed a large hole in the ice as he described in his original letter, quote, Another unique issue with South Pole Station is that our aircraft was not allowed to fly over a certain area designated five miles from the station. The reason stated because of an air sampling camp in that area. This did not make any sense to any of us on the crew because on two different occasions we had to fly over this area. One time due to a medical evacuation of the Australian camp called Davis Camp it was on the opposite side of the continent and we had to refuel at South Pole and a direct course to this Davis Camp right over the air sampling station. The only thing we saw going over this camp was a very large hole going into the ice. You could fly one of our LC-130 into this thing." End quote. Corey said that he saw the bottom of the same hole when the Anshar took him into Antarctica in January 2017. The other process, which is also destabilizing the Ross Ice Shelf, is the use of large pressurized steam hoses to reach the pre-Adamite ruins. Corey elaborates, quote, They are connected to large pressurized tanks in which large bags of water are hit with microwave beams to cause them to explode with steam, opening large areas. Fine-tuned excavations have been done with men holding pressurized hoses shooting steam. The melting ice is causing rivers to run under the ice shelf and lubricate it, causing it to slide even more, as well as producing collapse from the weight of the ice above as the ice heats up from the geothermal activity." End quote. In addition, there are excavations being conducted by other nations across Antarctica, which again are having destabilizing effect on all of Antarctica's ice shelves. Basically, the base temperatures of the ice shelves are on the rise, leading to ice melting and adding to the resulting water sludge acting as a lubricant for the ice shelves to move. According to research scientists with the Man Drill Project, the Ross Ice Shelf is moving at one foot a day. This is creating problems as the shelf moves over the pre-Adamite excavation sites because the tunnels created to reach them have to be constantly lengthened as the ice shelf moves. Corey was told that disclosure announcements will begin with sanitized releases about the excavations of the pre-Adamite ruins by leading scientists that have been working on the excavations since 2002. Documentaries of it will feature only the terrestrial elements of the pre-Adamite civilization. All evidence of alien life and technology has been removed and will be kept secret. The Antarctica disclosure was to be followed by a limited disclosure initiative concerning the military industrial complex secret space program comprising the US Air Force, National Reconnaissance Office, National Security Agency and the Defense Intelligence Agency. As discussed in part one of this series, however, Corey explained that a senior official in the 
MICSSP, dubbed Sigmund, now suspects that a more advanced Navy space program exists and wants to uncover the truth before the Limited Disclosure Initiative moves forward. Consequently, while there is growing momentum behind a limited disclosure of the Antarctica excavations, there is also uncertainty over how this will occur. Will it begin with the prosecution of US elites involved in human trafficking, the Earth Alliance revealing its own Antarctica discoveries, or will there be some wildcard event such as the Ross Ice Shelf melting far more quickly than anticipated, revealing more of its hidden mysteries involving a pre-Adamite civilization? Corey has added important information about the pre-Adamites and their connection to the Homo Capensis. World Bank whistleblower Karen Hughes first identified this group as a non-human species, secretly exerting global influence. Corey explains, quote, I recently received confirmation that the scrolls that were removed by the Inner Earth Group were very important genetic bloodline databases that are super important to the human pre adamite hybrids that control much of the world through religion, the Vatican, and the financial system, London. Didn't Karen Hudes say she knew of a person with an elongated skull in London? End quote. The elite had planned on making an announcement in the future that these ETs were gods and they were demigods and we should worship and serve them. They were going to use the bloodline scrolls to prove their lineage and set up this system. Corey points out the major violations occurring in terms of breaking the Antarctic Treaty, which prescribes the weaponization of Antarctica. Article 1 in the treaty says, quote, Antarctica shall be used for peaceful purposes only. There shall be prohibited inter alia any measures of a military nature, such as the establishment of military bases and fortifications, the carrying out of military maneuvers, as well as the testing of any type of weapons. End quote. Furthermore, Corey points out that quote, the R and D installations, much like Project Iceworm, are highly against the Antarctic Treaty that states no weapons will be tested or developed in Antarctica. Also, for over 50 years, American shadow government groups have controlled a former Nazi base for their secret space program and turned it into a major spaceport that not only houses advanced interplanetary corporate conglomerate spacecraft, but also manufactures and repairs certain types of these vessels. End quote. These Antarctica bases form an Antarctica version of Area 51. Significantly, Lockheed Martin, the same corporation that helped establish Area 51 as a secret aerospace development facility in the 1950s, was in 2011 given a $2 billion contract to manage Antarctica operations for the National Science Foundation. This suggests that Lockheed Martin is using its National Science Foundation contract as a cover for a highly classified and illegal aerospace weapons development program in Antarctica's Area 51. What Corey reveals above is indeed a violation of the Antarctic Treaty, which also states in Article 10, quote, each of the contracting parties undertakes to exert appropriate efforts consistent with the Charter of the United Nations to the end that no one engages in any activity in Antarctica contrary to the principles or purposes of the present treaty. End quote. This is where provisions in the Antarctic Treaty become problematic since there are a number of non-signatory groups that operate military bases in Antarctica. Corey explains. Quote, there are a number of other spaceports in Antarctica that belong to breakaway Nazi remnants, as well as non-terrestrial groups that have huge bases down there. It is not just the reptilian, as has been reported in the past. The reptilians inhabit giant caverns in western Antarctica. This situation clearly creates problems once a group like the Cabal Shadow Government Military begin cooperating with one or more of the non-treaty parties operating in Antarctica in developing advanced weapons systems. Corey says that revealing the extent of military activities in Antarctica, quote, will make some alliance people very happy and a lot of the negative human groups very worried. This is a major violation of that treaty that could have huge ramifications. Cuban Missile Crisis type responses. We are already amidst a shadow civil war that is in extreme danger of becoming an overt civil war that some plan to lead into a world war as a last ditch effort to depopulate the planet and consequently reassert their control over the survivors. The negative groups have never been so close to defeat. End quote.
In closing, it is important to emphasize the ongoing scientific excavations of the pre-Adamite civilization has enormous implications for the planet. The alien artifacts, which include pre-Adamites in stasis chambers, are highly sought after by various groups. Some want to use these artifacts to disclose a sanitized version of an advanced human civilization that was flash frozen in Antarctica to kickstart the world economy and arguably act as a distraction from un upcoming criminal investigations. Other groups, the Cabal Shadow Government, want to gain access to the alien artifacts in order to create a new world religion where the pre-Adamites are revived and even presented as gods to be worshipped. Finally, there are military groups that wish to weaponize the alien artifacts for use in ongoing space programs and for a decisive advantage in facing a possible future world war. Despite these contentious situations, it is important to focus upon the best possible outcome and as Corey states, quote, the negative groups have never been so close to defeat, end quote.